Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, bringing you part two: the results of our ABCS experiment. What happens when we take four semi-pro teams from the Caribbean and put them into the Dutch second tier? But before we get into the results, a quick reminder that this channel is your one-stop shop for all things international and small club management on Football Manager. So make sure you hit that like button, you've subscribed to the channel, you've got the bell on for notifications so you don't miss out on any of the action. Okay, so zooming out here, you can see it's July 2021. And here is my edited version of the Dutch second division. We have removed the four young teams, Young Ajax, Young PSV, Young Feyenoord and Young Utrecht. And we have replaced them with four teams from former Dutch colonies in the Caribbean. So if we just go down here, we'll see those teams are Young Holland, who come from Curaçao. Then we also have RCA Racing Club Aruba. I know it's not their real kit, but I do like that pink and white number. We then also have Real Rincon. This is a team from Bonaire. And finally, we have this band of merry men from Suriname. It's Robin Hood. So if you were paying attention, you would have noticed when we looked at all of the club screens there that these are all semi-professional teams. They're in a professional league. Now, there's no relegation here. You can see here from the rules, top two get promoted. There's playoffs as well to sort out the other promoted team. There's no relegation. There's no relegation for the first two years. It does kick in a little bit later as we go forward. So I want to see with that safety net of no relegation over the next two seasons, can these teams survive and can they then kick on and develop before that trapdoor opens? I mean, if we look at the preview, we can see they're all expected to finish in the bottom four places. Young Holland, bit of a surprise that the Curaçao team have got the longest odds of them all. Robin Hood have decent odds at 33 to 1 though, so maybe they're the team to watch. Right, so we fast forwarded to June 2022, the end of the first season. And yeah, you can see the four teams we've added did all finish bottom. Rail Rincon in particular had a horrendous time, only five points and a minus 97 goal difference. They did pick up one win. That was against uh, RCA from Aruba. So yeah, that was kind of to be expected that they might pick up a win over one of the other teams. RCA themselves, 19th, 12 points, minus 61, not great goal difference. Young Holland did better than expected, at least. I suppose that's a positive. 17 points and a minus 59 goal difference. Robin Hood did the best out of our teams. 22 points on the board, minus 43 goal difference. If we have a look at their results as well, they actually got a win over one of the real Dutch teams. They beat MVV away as well, 2-1. Also picking up a win over Dutch opposition, Jong Holland, who beat FC Eindhoven. But yeah, RCA just picked up their wins against their fellow Dutch Caribbean nations. Now, I've done a quick check. All teams have remained semi-professional. They have made some transfers, and you see they've gone for some Dutch players. So uh, Robin Hood picked up, for example, this guy, Ozan Turk, 36 years old. So they brought in someone with experience. Young Holland, interesting. They released a lot of players to other clubs in Curaçao. They brought in a few more, but no money spent, obviously. No money to spend. RCA also shipped out a lot of players to fellow Aruban teams and made a few free transfers. The least transfer activity happened at Real Rincon, but they only got five points, so maybe that was their mistake. Okay, it's now June 2023, and has there been any improvement? Well, Real Rincon, <laughs> five points again. One win over Young Holland. Young Holland slipped back a lot. 19th this time, only nine points, and they did beat Telstar and FC Don Bosch, but... Very poor season from them, failing to build on the first season up. RCA take 18th with 17 points, so um, I guess that's the kind of improvement. They got a win over FC Eindhoven as well. Robin Hood, though, look at this, 32 points, just six points off FC Den Bosch and seven wins. So they be beat Go Ahead Eagles, they beat FC Volendam as well, also FC Den Bosch. So now we're going to advance one more year. The relegation is going to kick in. I reckon one of these teams is going to go down, but will it be Real Rincon, Young Holland, or someone else? 
And there it is. Sure enough, Real Rincon go down. And what an awful season. One point. That's it. They got a draw with Robin Hood. Minus 110 goal difference. Absolutely shocking season from the Bonaire side. Young Holland, slight improvement on last season. 10 points this time. Two wins, but they were both over Real Rincon, so they don't really count. Racing Club Aruba, only 14 points this time. And again, two wins over Real Rincon and one over Young Holland. Robin Hood, still the best of our teams, but not getting close to 16th place really this time. Nine points back. They did pick up seven wins, so again, beating MVV, beating Almira City, beating Cambur and Excelsior, so they do have the potential. But they're still semi-pro, and still not really that active in the transfer market. Right, so now we advance to 2025. Are Young Holland the next team to go down? Of course they are, although they weren't too bad. 12 points, and they picked up three wins this season. Groningen and Den Bosch. And look, a bit of hope perhaps here. Dortrecht for the 19th team. RCA finished 18th. Picked up six wins. Beat Dortrecht, beat MVV, beat Eindhoven and Topos. And it's Topos who was 17th. Robin Hood finished 16th. So we're seeing progress here. Just a little bit. Baby steps maybe. But 10 wins this season for Robin Hood. How about that? But Robin Hood remains semi-professional. This is something they need to get professional status, I think, to really kick on. Yeah, and the same is true for RCA. 2026 now, what has happened to RCA? What has happened to RCA? They've had a rail rincon style season. Just three points and a minus 106 goal difference. They go down. Robin Hood slipped back as well after that joyous high of 16th last season. They're back down to 19th. They did still pick up seven wins. Um, obviously, they beat RCA, but they beat quite a lot of the Dutch teams as well. Did the double over FC Eindhoven. 27 points, though. Not a great total. They're still semi-professional, and they didn't actually sign anybody this season. I wondered if maybe being in the Dutch league, the travel cost, something like that, being a semi-pro team, it's bankrupting them, but... Says the finances are okay, they just don't have enough money to turn professional, and that's holding them back. And inevitably, disappointingly, we get to the 2027 season, and Robin Hood are relegated. And again, like the other teams from the Dutch Caribbean islands, they really kind of hit hard times in this final season. Only 15 points, so really shocking total for them. Only two wins. They've got the number... Of FC Eindhoven, clearly. They beat FC Volendam as well, but not great. And still uh, semi-professional. I think that was the killer. If we look at their transfers, they did actually try to bring a few people in. We got a loan signing, lots of free transfers, but I think they just weren't able to bring in the quality. Interesting here that one of their youngsters was snapped up by PSV under 18, 16 year old player look at that he's got a decent value so maybe you know maybe there's a glimmer of hope there's a sign that being in the dutch leagues they can start to produce better youth players hmm but overall maybe a little disappointing then once relegation kicked in it just took four seasons for all of our teams to disappear i think yeah the fact that they're semi-professional was the killer. So, a couple of questions to think about before we start the main series. The first one is, well, which of these four teams are we going to manage? You can make your suggestions in the comments, but I'll be putting a poll up on the community tab soon, so keep an eye out for that. And the second thing is, should I make some further edits in the game setup? Should I perhaps make these teams professional and see what happens, see if that helps? Or should I go for the challenge of taking them over as a semi-pro team and just trying to do better than the AI? Let me know what you think in the comments. As ever, your feedback is always appreciated. And you know what else is appreciated? You being subbed to this channel, liking this video, and getting that bell on for notifications. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed that little prelude to my main series, and I welcome your advice on how I can do better than the AI. But for now... Thank you very much for watching. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you again soon.